ways of holding your compost in a heap. Yeah, you could make it just on the ground without any enclosure. Oh, that's feasible, but you won't get very good decomposition to the side. It probably won't get so hot and it'll take up quite a bit of space. Generally, having, having some sides of some kind it makes for a nice result. Then it's a question of what kind of sides or what kind of enclosure to use. We've been doing some comparisons at Homemakers this spring of using different types of compost bay uh, or bin. And this is starting with the plastic ones. Like There are different types of plastic enclosures that you can buy. This is in the slightly larger size. You can also have the smaller round Dalek ones which taper up to a point. Uh, the volume they hold is quite a bit less than this because being square right to the top means this one holds 0.6 cubic meters volume. Uh, it's quite a bit of compost. Uh, in weight terms that could be up to half a ton maybe if it was quite damp. <laughs> and the, the, the issue more is you know how you get it out and, and also how hot will this get. And what I've discovered is that this, this volume of compost is still not really enough to get really hot. When I say really hot, I'm talking about 55 centigrade or over, that's maybe 120 Fahrenheit, which is enough to kill weed seeds. Now you can make nice compost below those temperatures without hardly any warmth at all. That would still make nice compost, it just takes longer and you will have any weed seeds that you put in will still be there when you spread the compost. It's not the end of the world. You know, you can still use it. And especially with no dig, when the compost is on top, the weed seeds that develop are very easy to pull out. Or you can run a rake through the surface in the early spring, say when it's dry and breezy day, and you can kill them when they're very small, just for example. So I don't want to put you off making small amounts of compost that might have weed seeds in. I just want to show the, the ways of getting around that and, and the options that there are. And this one, I found that the temperature has not gone above 50 centigrade and it's mostly 40 centigrade or below. That's in the range 100 to 115 Fahrenheit roughly. So we know there's probably going to be some weed seeds in there depending what, how many we put in. And another issue with these enclosed, very enclosed spaces is um, <laughs> humidity. If you put in a lot of green matter, it's, it's going to be quite soggy probably. But that's why you can see there's quite a bit of wood in here. And although that might seem annoying when you're spreading it, actually, I don't mind that at all. Wood in, in compost that you spread on your beds is, carries on decomposing in a fungal manner and, and it's adding goodness to the soil in that way. So we never sieve compost. I'm not worried if it's a little bit lumpy. And in fact, some of this we have spread already uh, because I wanted a bit on the new ground over there. I wanted a bit of micros more than anything, uh, which I reckon this one's got plenty of. So if we just have a look, th this, the first ingredients went into this heap on uh, three months ago exactly, towards the end of April. We're now end of July. April, May, June, July. Yeah, that's right, three months. Uh, so it's not old. And yet you can see it has decomposed pretty well. This is from towards the bottom. I've scraped off the top, which was still quite green and put that actually in our current other heaps to carry on decomposing. And yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, that's usable. It's not perfect compost, but it is usable at that stage if you want to, or you've got the option to leave it longer. And that's where the roof is good because it keeps out the excess rain. This normally has a roof that <laughs> fell off because what happened was, Last week I was um, taking, I experimented with this door because they, they've got the door at the bottom of these heaps and that's, you take out the door and then the idea is you can scoop out somehow the compost at the bottom. I use this fork mainly, so I put it in like that and kind of levered out the compost I could get out and filled a wheelbarrow, got a whole barrow full of compost from that. And then I didn't have time to spread it at the time. I was, we were waiting to harvest potatoes actually before I used it. So I left the barrow here, I left that door open when I came back the next day, it had all fallen apart and the top bit of plastic had fallen off and the side was coming out and the top was loose. So they're just here waiting to be reassembled once we get this compost out. But it, it highlights really the slight flimsiness of this structure. It's not the strongest and it's only thin plastic. 
And so that's one reason it's never going to hold a huge amount of heat. Uh, it's, you know, plastic is not a great, it's, it's quite a conductor of heat actually, uh, from what I can see anyway. So the heat, heat flows out the side a bit. Um, yeah, <laughs> apart from that, <laughs> it's still making nice compost. But when you do use bins like this, I would say be careful to get enough woody material in there. That will really help to keep the heap open and, and it not to be too soggy. And for comparison now, let's have a look at uh, a heap that we assembled at the same time as this one arrived, so middle April. And over there we can see the results of using that which is made of pallets. So, by comparison, here we have a nice three bay setup and all created with 12 sides of which are old pallets. And we actually knocked the, the protruding side of each pallet off and <laughs> you could use whole pallets, you know, that's fine. And actually I've seen nice work where the people put in plants in that space, like flowers and things. We did that at the Node Dig Garden at Hampton Court Palace actually. So that's an option, but it does take up more space. And particularly if you've got a, a side between bins that you've got that extra space taken up which is something or nothing anyway so these are the tops of pallets and they are simply wired together at the corners that is all there's no post in the ground they're not anchored to the ground in any way at all underneath is simply soil and weeds when we made these this these three bays which was just three months ago this was still very weedy I and mean, it still is <laughs> there's bindweed here the roots are still here uh, there's some brambles, they're still trying to grow a bit. There's thistles and nettles and bits of grass, cooch grass, you know, everything you don't want in the garden. But actually, the compost heap and its materials on top of that is enough to kill pretty much whatever weeds you have. So there's nothing under here. There's no cardboard under the heap. There's no concrete. It's just on the soil. And these are just loose frames held together with a wire, top and bottom at each corner. It's as simple as that. So this is the current heap, which We've already filled this year and last week we turned it into the middle heap here. We'll look at that in a minute. And then the heap that we filled second, era, second to this one is that one there. Finished just a week ago. And this one, when that one finished, we started this one again, having emptied it into there. <laughs> so current heap, second, third. And then when that one finishes, we'll turn that one into the middle as well. So just have a quick look at the current heap. I'll just mention one, two things like, see what we're putting in here. That's roots of bindweed. Fine to compost. <laughs> they all disappear. They're not invincible. And it's not only about having heat. These heaps do get hotter though than the plastic bit. But we were putting a lot of bindweed in there actually, and it's disappeared. And that's without going above 50 centigrade and mostly below 40. So I just think about that for a minute and how that probably contradicts everything you've been told about what you can compost. There's a lot of myths and misunderstandings about how you make compost and what you can add to a compost heap and how it needs to be. Another one is the slatted sides, because it's often said that air needs to flow in the sides. It doesn't really. You know, these, it's pretty static. And what I found is good, we've got cardboard. It's fallen down a bit with the wind, but basically that's I keep these sides lined with cardboard and that keeps in the moisture in dry weather, keeps in the warmth right to the edge or as much as possible to the edge. So you get a more even decomposition when you insulate, if you like, the side with some cardboard, big pieces of cardboard, really useful for this job. And then looking at the next one, oh, the temperature in there, I forgot to mention, that's 40 degrees at the moment. So this heap has been going only a week and it's just already building up some momentum. One thing I do when I first fill these heaps is actually get in them and walk on the materials after about a week or so, week or two, to firm them down. Once, once you get higher up, they, they settle and the, the, the heat is going and it, you don't need to do that, but you still need to tamp it down a bit. Um, it, it does want to be firmed down and the piece is not too big that you're putting in. This one is reading the thermometer which is over a foot long, in, in the middle is reading 50 centigrade. That's nearly 100, 115 Fahrenheit. And it's been 
over 60 for most of the time that we filled this heat which took about seven weeks and that was a lot of material you these heaps are 1.1 meter cube volume so that's nearly twice the volume of that plastic bin that we saw first so there's quite a bit of compost here and to fill heaps like this this was up to the top when we finished it you need a lot of material just don't underestimate that if you're new to compost making and even on a full-size British allotment, which is 1 16th of an acre, I reckon to run a three-bay system like this ongoing, you'd need to be bringing in material from outside, like coffee grounds from restaurants or other people's weeds, <laughs> whatever. Don't be afraid of weeds. You know, they're, they're all good. It's all good to compost. So this heap is then going to turn into there in about a month's time on top of what you see here. We undid these wires before starting, oh, almost undid them. And so I can take this out and show you what is here. So you can see the cardboard lining is conveniently holding it in place. We put cardboard on top as well, just to hold in a bit more warmth. It doesn't stop the rain going in. If it comes to winter, if this was still compost, I would put some kind of corrugated steel roof over or at least a sheet of polythene over the top to keep the winter rain off that's when it can get soggy at the moment in summer it's not i would say not a problem but also it's not a problem because we've been putting in a decent amount of wood as you saw in the previous heat so this has had similar ingredients materials to before and the temperature is still even though it's getting older now three months old in places temperature is still 40 centigrade so it's showing how it's still working and this is what we've got you can see it's pretty nice compost oh look there's a bindweed <laughs> that's a root of bindweed that has survived that can go back in the current heat that would have been just one or two probably one that was actually growing from the ground into the compost bin but you know i'm not phased by that it's not the problem that is sometimes made out because when you're no dig and putting compost on top you see those roots like i did there it's just bright white and shiny and it's not going to suddenly fill your garden with bindweed. So what we've got is all the goodness from those bindweed roots in this heap. Fantastic. I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing there. There's another bit of bindweed. That one is looks like it's on the way out there because it is pretty warm in here. In the middle, it's, it's probably 45 centigrade. So there we have it, the three bay approach. So it's keeping this middle one empty at the beginning. This was empty until last week when we turn that one into it and then in a month's time we'll turn this bay ingredients on top of that take out this cardboard first so we'll have a really full amount of compost well over a ton I would say for using later in the autumn and meanwhile we can fill that one and finish it and fill that one and finish it and then once we've spread the ingredients of this one we can turn that one into there and so it goes on. So this is one way of managing a three bay system. And I'm just a bit nervous of this. No, that's okay. Right, I will come back soon though and put this in, but first I want to show you the current, my normal composting system, which is larger scale again. So we had to take a slight pause there. There was a torrential shower just as we were finishing that section, luckily, and before starting this one. So here we are at my main composting area for Homemaker's Garden, which is now over an acre of ground, 4,000 square meters. So there's a lot of material going into these heaps, including grass mowings and all the vegetable wastes and tree prunings. I have a shredder as well. And so I was looking to get quite a bit of woody waste in there as well as the green. And these bays are each 1.5 by 1.8 meters. That's five by six feet. And by the time we've filled them up, that's close to three meter cube volume. And that's three times what we can fit in one of those pallet bays to give you an idea. It's just quite small increases in side size, massively ramps up the volume. 
and that means the heat, <laughs> once we get a bit of warmth in here, which takes a few days after the first fill, it tends to hold it and, and then compost very quickly everything else that we add. Uh, in the summer particularly, not so much in the winter because there's less green matter going on. And in fact, the thermometer here I put in just before is reading 70 centigrade. That's 155 Fahrenheit. It's a little bit warmer than, well, that's, that's as warm as I like to go really. Above 70 centigrade, you can be losing some fungal quality in your compost. And that means you need to add more brown. And it's a bit the same down there. You see at the bottom of the heap, actually it's reading around 60 centigrade. That's 140 Fahrenheit, that's okay. <laughs> uh, but the roof on here is about keeping the compost not dry, but avoiding it getting soggy. And in our climate, it's just started to rain again now, the, that can be the problem, that moisture displaces air. And so if it gets too wet, you, you'll make smelly compost basically, which is savable by spreading it on ground and leaving it exposed to air, but it won't ever be quite such good quality as if you can keep it moist but not too wet and if i just lift up a bit of compost here now so it'll just give you well it's not compost what we've added over the last uh well actually only very recently <laughs> most of this went on crikey just in the last day but i don't know if you can see the steam coming out there now already that is warm just taking off this top layer of what i mean literally that's one day's additions at the moment so that's tops of onions because we're harvesting a lot of onions. The, having the roof make, means we've got a nice area for keeping them dry. Um, bits of cardboard for brown. This, I want to get some more wood in here this afternoon. So it's a good old mixture. And the way this works here is that we fill these bays over a period of time, however long it takes according to the time of year. That one took five weeks, um, finished just over two weeks ago. And then that we shall turn that into the bay next to it in probably in about six weeks time. There's no rush and once it's cooled down a bit and then that will be usable sometime in the autumn. This one we only started, I keep the dates up here which is always useful actually to, as a reminder, 12th of July, today's 28th so 16 days <laughs> to fill that, that's the fastest time of year. We, we'll get to the top here, you know literally we'll probably be up to there before it sinks a bit in about two weeks I should think. This will be about a five week fill and then we'll move on to the next one and then each one in turn gets turned once. One turn, that's quite enough. And in fact, just yesterday, Edward, who's filming, was turning, actually having a workout, <laughs> so going to the gym, the heap that was made this last spring, this spring, and after about six weeks or so, that settled and cooled down and we just lift out the sides. These are it's all temporary here, they're just one, one screw at the most holding it in. And it lift out the side and then he turned that into the bay next door. And you can see that compost there is on average three months old and it's looking really pretty nice. You know, you could use compost like that. On the whole though, I prefer to leave it a bit longer, but you've got a big window of opportunity. If you leave it too long, it condenses into much less obviously. I, I like to use it when there's still some visible organic matter. We never sieve it. And I hope you've enjoyed having a look at some of these structures and giving you ideas for how you can make lovely compost as well. <laughs>